Like, <coughs> this is with A, and then another John staff, and Tanya is in this period. So, um, we are talking about handheld devices, and in particular, we talk about that thing. And before we go into what Kindle uh, is, and we'll talk about uh, uh, why handheld devices are so popular, and it is because of four major reasons. Uh, first of all, uh, it is entertaining. I think uh, most of the people who brought iPad 2 is for entertainment purposes or for gaming purposes. And I myself have like a new and PSP, probably, and I, uh, that's why it is so popular and it's convenient, portable, and also it's effective too. Uh, I myself use a smartphone, uh, it's good for checking emails and uh, stalking on people. And also, uh, because information changes very fast, and you need you, you, you have a handheld device, so you get to update uh, yourself really easy. And um, if, what's the definition of uh, handheld devices? And it's a portable device that which provides you for your public responses. As as simple as that, and the, probably the most ancient uh, um, portable devices we classify this as a uh, handheld calculator. So I am uh, uh, not sure if you guys agree, but this is how we come up with. And other examples with uh, ECs and smartphones, uh, portable DVD players, and also uh, portable game consoles. Mm -hmm. um, after this, we'll talk about uh, what is Kindle. Kindle is a device which is launched by uh, Amazon in 2007. And it, is it allows users to download ebooks from the internet. And it pretty much revolutionized the uh, ebook industry, and uh, it's an emerging market, and also emerging a new, completely different market. And we will see what we going on later on in the presentation. And uh, we we know what Kindle is doing, but what's special about Kindle in this hardware? Uh, you can see this definition. There's uh, four four uh, four different components, and which if we sum up the four components. Is and it has uh, 4 gig internal flash memory and uh, 53 megahertz CPU and USB 2.0 plus a significant difference from the standard standard industry uh, specifications, which is an electronic paper display. And I will later on display uh, talk about what's the uh, technical specification of the e-paper and how this uh, e-paper works. Uh, e-paper is uh, basically, you have these represent one pixel, and these two dots represent one pixel. When these uh, cubicle got charged up by a positive charge, those electric electrical ink will be shot up, and when it's shot up, it will display a dark thing on the board. And since these are representation of one pixel, if you have thousands of them, or, or multi, multi, multi millions of them on, on the board, you can get the e, e ink and which is how it works. And what we can what we have learned in uh, e, e lab or like that uh, <laughs> it's just a joke here. Yeah. Uh, it's in Kindle. Uh, first of all uh, we have coding for digital communications. Uh, we, we have those when ebooks are down from the internet it got uh, decrypted and also encrypted by by the Wi Fi uh, communication channel, channel and second of all we have uh, storage and decoding and last but not least is the uh, digital system and logic because we have those uh, huge circuits ICs and these are uh, major things that we learn in uh, ELEC series of one and next we'll talk about the future trend and uh, what we be revolutionizing the industry. Uh, so after talking uh, what is uh, the underlying technology in Kindle. Mm -hmm. We're going to take a closer look as to whether uh, Kindle can be actually applied to the business world. Uh, our group thinks that Kindle uh, right now is more uh, more majorly for leisure use, and at the same time, it's not very introduced in the business environment. Uh, the good thing about Kindle is that it actually supports PDF formats, uh, which is a very good substitute as compared to physical copies of documents. And we believe that um, with Kindle's introduction, it could actually be a very environmental friendly and also a very cost effective tool for offices. And that's why um, we think that it actually could be applied to the business world, but right now the business world is not that accustomed to this idea. 
so that's why uh, there are more generations to come for Kindle to be more uh, revolutionized in order to be introduced into the business world. So let's take a look at what are the impacts of this technology. Um, as mentioned by Jonathan earlier on, uh, the major impact of this technology are good things that it's more on the electronic paper and also on the electronic ink. Uh, because this is a very good um, technology in a sense that it actually serves as a very good alternative to uh, traditional paper or even black plywood displays. Uh, in a sense that uh, it has three major advantages for Kindle's technology. Uh, first, it saves battery life. Um, in later on sections, I'm actually going to compare different ebook readers provided by different service providers. And we could see that Kindle actually has the longest battery life. Um, it is also one of the lightest devices, and there is no back glare. By back glare, uh, we could see that uh, this is a traditional uh, backlit back flat panel. With this backlit flat panel, um, when there is actually sunlight, you actually see your face um, on that flat panel. But um, with Kindle, we do not have this problem. So um, let's take a look about the applications of this technology. Um, applications of this um, electronic uh, ink and also of this electronic paper technology uh, is actually manifested in many different ways and also applications. Uh, traditionally, we have the um, handheld phones, and we also have the um, in terms of chips and also in terms of um, electronic watch, we also have the e-ink uh, being employed into this uh, technology. After looking at the impact of this technology and actually um, how the e-ink and also the electronic paper has been actually employed in many different kinds of applications, for example, watches that we've just seen, chips that we've just seen, uh, let's look at whether Kindle is successful or unsuccessful. Uh, to determine whether Kindle is successful and unsuccessful, we would like to look into this question uh, from two different perspectives. Uh, one from North America and the other one from Asia. We think that uh, in North America, Kindle's technology is quite successful on an individual level in the sense that because um, people in North America has a very general and also widespread reading habit, um, at the same time, the recent launches of the Kindle's new versions, um, they, have their, they have a very um, um, competitive price uh, in a sense that that's why everyone is rushing to get the Kindle for the natural reading. Um, and in terms of um, whether um, it is easy for the uh, Kindle users in North America to get books, it is easier actually for them to get books uh, because there is a very good retail distribution. Um, and more importantly is that wireless communication is readily available in many different retail stores um, in US and that's why um, they, they are pretty easy to download books whenever they want. Um, in North America, however, we think that uh, Kindle is unsuccessful on the business level in the sense that um, Kindle, we think that it could actually help uh, the office to create a paperless environment. Um, however, I think this idea, we think that this idea is not that um, ready in North America. So let's, let's take a look at Asia. Um, Asia, um, unfortunately, Kindle's technology is quite unsuccessful across um, different and all levels. And this is because um, Kindle's fear that uh, if it actually launches um, in Asia, or it's getting more widespread in Asia, is that uh, there has been a lot of existence of pirated copies of books. Uh, by saying this, um, it means that um, Actually, when the, uh, when the editors or the writers, they actually write a book and they don't really want to publish it in the version because uh, in mainland China, a lot of pirated books existed and that's why they don't get their money back if they do so. And second of all, um, there is actually an adequate retail support uh, as compared to a full arm retail support in North America and there's actually scarce wireless communication which makes um, getting e-books from the internet harder in Asia than in North America. So, uh, to look at the major competitors of Kindle, uh, there are three major competitors for Kindle. Uh, the one uh, um, at the left hand corner uh, is the uh, Barnes and Noble's Mood Book, and then the second one is the Sony eBook Reader, and finally, this is the iPad. So, um, right now, Kindle is actually targeting to sell more than 8 million Kindle e readers this year. So, um, we wonder if this statistics is really that justified. Uh, so we actually uh, take a look uh, into the comparison between these three major competitors for Kindle. Well, uh, 
Uh, I have to stress here that we're not doing a marketing campaign for uh, Kindle, but in a sense that we compare Amazon Kindle, Barnes and Noble, Luke, and also Sony uh, Reader in uh, different aspects, particularly, and we would now like to take a closer look at uh, the resolution. Resolution, in terms of resolution, both Amazon Kindle and Sony ebook Reader actually uh, outperforms to the Barnes and Noble Luke. And more importantly, for the Kindle ebook is that it actually has a very good uh, e-ink and also a very good network support. And that's why whenever there is actually network support, uh, books can be readily available and downloaded. Whereas uh, Barnes & Noble Luke and also Sony ebook is not that good in terms of wireless communications and also in terms of ease of access to the ebooks. Um, and finally, one thing that I would like to mention is that uh, for Amazon Kindle, there, um, the battery life uh, could be uh, withstand as long as one month. Uh, which is a very good compared to the other two ebook readers. So after seeing uh, different um, types of ebooks, um, uh, we're not actually focusing particularly on uh, Kindle, but we would like to actually to finally take a look at the future development of the ebook and also or the e-reader markets. Um, our group thinks that there are four major conclusions uh, from the future developments of the ebook or e-reader market. In a sense that uh, EA may loses its popularity in the future because it's quite a primitive technology at the moment. So there could be very cheaper substitutes in the future, uh, which employs LCD or OLED. Uh, secondly, um, uh, we think that mobile phones and also netbooks will also transform into an e-reader itself, and that could actually um, dampen the uh, existing demand for this kind of e-book readers that I've just mentioned before. Uh, thirdly, we think that uh, in order to diversify the business, uh, we think that ebook readers will actually have to get apps too, uh, same as iPad um, and also other smartphone devices. And finally, as mentioned earlier on, uh, we, uh, we have to talk about that uh, Asia does not have a very good successful Kindle development. But we think that in the future, uh, China, India, Brazil and the European nations will actually uh, propel global growth because of the emerging wealth. Uh, from China and particularly in the Asian countries. Uh, but uh, in any sense, the US will now uh, still remain the biggest market. So um, this is the end of the presentation. Thank you.